Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears here. Thank you for joining me. Pretty Pink Posh is celebrating their 10th birthday all month long. And today I'm sharing a cake shaker card using some products from their birthday release. Let's take a look at the products I'll be using. This first die is the Pierced Stars plate. I'm also going to be using the cake shaker die. You can use this to make a shaker, but you can also use that die to make a cake that's not a shaker. I'll also be bringing in the party balloons die set, as well as the party hats die set. So you can see there's different size and designs on those party hats. And I'll also be using the sentiment strips for a birthday stamp set. Lots of different sentiments on here that you can use on a birthday card. And there's also the coordinating dies to cut those out. So I'm going to start out with the pierced stars plate. I already die cut a piece of light yellow cardstock. You can see that those stars just pierce the cardstock. They don't actually cut the stars out. They just pierce it to make stars on the background of that card panel. I'm going to use my ink to define these stars a little bit more. So I'm just taking a small blending brush and I'm using my squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink and I'm just adding some of that yellow ink to the edges of all of the stars on that background. So here's what it looks like after I've done all of the stars. You can see it just brings out a little bit more definition. It's still subtle, but a little bit more definition for those stars. I'll set that panel aside, and now I'm going to bring out the Cake Shaker die set. You can see that this is a two layer cake and there's also a candle that's included. I need to use my wire cutters to carefully take that candle out of the center. And then you're left with a die that looks like this. Now if you wanted to make it a shaker card, these center pieces you would leave inside of the die. But if you did not want to make this a shaker card, you would simply cut those dies away from the large cake die. So with those middle dies layered inside the large cake die, once you die cut it, this is what you get. You can see you get the inside of the cake cut out, which gives you just the outline of the cake, which would be the frame for your shaker. Now since I want a panel of cardstock behind my shaker, I'm going to go ahead and now cut these inside dies out of the large cake die. And then I'll die cut that large cake die with the same color cardstock that I used for the frame. And if you wanted to make a cake that is not a shaker, this is how you would do it. You would just die cut that large die away from the inside dies and use that on a card. I want to add some definition to my cake so I'm going to use the frame die and add some blue ink along the edges. I'm using the Distress Oxide Prize Ribbon ink and just inking up the edges of that entire frame. I'm also going to add the same ink around the edges of the solid cake die cut. And I'm just going around the edges and towards the middle, but I'm not covering the entire middle. I just want to have some definition along the edges, but still have it light in the middle because that's how I get the shading from dark to light. Next, I took the cake die and I die cut a piece of acetate. And I'm just going to glue the cake frame on top of the acetate. I'm just going to line that up really well. I'm going to put an acrylic block right over top of that and just hold that down just to make sure that glue adheres really well. Next I'm going to add some thin foam strips on the back side of the cake die cut that has the acetate and I'm going to put the foam strips all along the edges where the cardstock is, making sure that that foam is connected from corner to corner so none of the shaker pieces fall out. And since there's two layers to the cake, I'm also making sure that I add a piece of foam between the layers. 
That way I can contain the shaker pieces in each one of those layers. If I didn't put any foam between the layers, then all of my shaker pieces would fall all the way to the bottom of the bottom layer of the cake. And I wanted to make sure that I had shaker pieces inside of both layers. I'm gonna use the Pretty Pink Posh Bright Rainbow Mix, and I'm adding the shaker pieces inside each one of those layers. Next I will remove the backing of the foam and then I'm going to add the solid die cut piece of that cake right on top. So I'm just going to flip it over so that the part that I inked is face down and that will give it a good seal and there is my cake shaker. Next I'll use the Party Balloons die set. I love this die set because there's different styles of party balloons from hearts to stars to the regular oval shape balloon. These dies also have stitching on them which adds to the detail which I love. I went ahead and die cut one of the layering pieces. This particular one has star cutouts and that is going to go over top of one of those yellow solid balloons. I'm just inking up the edges with some red ink since I die cut it out of red cardstock. I just want to add some depth to it and then I'm going to take an orange ink and I'm going to ink up this orange balloon. I die cut that one out of some patterned paper. So I'm going to have two balloons on my card, one out of patterned paper and one with stars. I actually die cut the bottom yellow piece out of some pattern paper as well, but you can see those stars going through that balloon. I'm going to attach the balloon strings to the balloon. So we're just putting some glue on the top of the string and then adding the balloon so that the balloon is on top of the string. And I'll do that for both. Next I'm going to work on the party hat. Now you can do a solid piece of cardstock for the party hat or you can layer the cardstock like I'm going to do here. So one die I cut out of green cardstock and it has holes in it and then I'll layer that onto a solid piece of yellow cardstock that I cut with the solid die. And then I'm going to add a bow on the top. And I did ink up the edges with some green ink just to add some more depth to that party hat. Now I'm going to go ahead and start positioning everything on my card panel. I'll have the balloons tucked behind the cake. And I also die cut the candle die out of six different colors of cardstock in rainbow order and I'm going to have the candles there at the top of the cake but first I'm going to go ahead and start gluing my balloons down making sure everything is in place before I add the candles and I'll add the candles after I've added the balloons and the cake to that cardstock layer. So those candles also have a die for the flame and I did die cut that flame six different times out of yellow cardstock and I will be using a orange colored pencil to add some highlights to the flame and you'll see that here coming up soon. So now that the cake is added to the cardstock layer, I'm going to go ahead and position all of my candles in place and then I'll glue them down with each of the flames as well. So here's where I'm going to come in and add a little bit of orange to the center of the flame, just again to add a little bit more depth to those flames. I'll stamp out a sentiment that says it's party time. I'm stamping it on white cardstock and then I'm going to use the coordinating dies to die cut that out. I love that coordinating die set because there are different size dies from smaller rectangular dies to larger ones depending on the size of the sentiment and there's also straight edge dies and even scalloped rectangle dies to cut the sentiment out as well. I'm going to go ahead and add the party hat to the lower right hand corner of that cake and then I'll add the sentiment to the top right hand corner. 
I'll add that entire layer to a white A2 size card base and that will complete my card. Now I created my card using some rainbow colors, but think of all of the different possibilities that you have with this die set and all of the different possible color combinations that you can use to create a birthday card using this cake shaker die set. If you're interested in any of the products I've used today, check the description box of this YouTube video and on my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like this and want to see more, be sure to click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.